Hi everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Happy New Year. We are making every effort to do one episode a week and so because the store is not open for walk-in business but I still have to shop, uh, I thought it would be fun to show you some of the treasures that I've been able to pick up in the past couple of weeks. Um, many of these items will be available for sale on the website, so um, we look forward to hopefully including you as customers as well as subscribers to our YouTube channel. Thank you for that. We're going to start off with the items that are on the mannequins because they're somewhat distracting, I think. Um, those of you that are vintage clothing lovers are familiar with the Mr. Dino label. Typically it's done in polyester and really um, the prints are inspired by, to be polite, uh, Pucci. Um, and I've never had one as good as this. It's got this awesome uh, bell bottom drop waist with a matching bra. And you can see this girl is ready to go to Mexico when the government says it's safe to travel again. And I'll be joining her. I desperately need a vacation. Um, and some of the accessories we'll go over in a second. But this fabulous ensemble is a two-piece Dolce & Gabbana denim printed uh, short capri with a jacket with faux fur. Never been worn. I love it because it's colorful and it's the kind of thing that when you wear it, the colors make you happy. Uh, and it's been paired with a tooled leather crossbody bag with angels kissing. I believe this is probably from the 90s or early 2000s. Um, it's huge. You could probably fit a dog in there. And the condition is impeccable. And then while I'm on this side, let's focus on these awesome uh, Potiswa and leather Art Deco inspired boots by the best shoemaker, Maud Frison. I'm being prompted to say that these are from 1978. Okay, one of the reasons why I love Maud Frison so much is because of her attention to detail. Um, she also has other labels. Uh, she lost the Maud Frison name, I think, when she got her divorce. And so she started another collection under the name Ombeline. And yeah, so what's so cool about this is you can change the look of this by folding over the top and giving it a little bit more red. Um, gently worn. I mean, the bottom barely looks like it was worn. It's a really, it's a fabulous boot. And it's actually a decent size. It's like a size eight and a half. And then moving right along, one of my other favorite leather people is a gentleman by the name of Andrea Feaster. A lot of people think that Andrea is Andrea, as in a woman's name, but this color-blocked purse can either be a shoulder bag or a clutch, or a, not a clutch, or a single handle. Great design. There's access to put important things on the outside. Excellent condition. 1980s. And I think Beth Harmon might have liked this, too, because it's color-blocked. We have another Andrea Feaster color blocked snakeskin 80s purse in beautiful condition in colors that just speak to me. If this was teal or turquoise, it would not be available for sale. I would keep it. And the last thing, accessory-wise, on this side to show you, hands down, are some of the coolest design shoes that I've had. Andrea Feaster again, 
and inspired by Cartier or one of the jewelry designers actually created a brooch with this um, symbolism. Uh, what's beautiful about this is it's cut with the metallic hearts and stars and miscellaneous underneath. So it's a complicated, it's a really well-made, well-designed shoe, gently worn once again. And rumor has it that I may be getting a clutch that goes with this soon. So stay tuned. And then let's finish the accessories. Who doesn't love a Bakelite framed purse from the 40s? What's great about this is it's got this kind of sunflower burst print and then um, white seed beads in a... Um, so it has this fabulous white bead squiggly pattern around the floral print. Super clean, uh, which is hard to believe for such an old purse. And lots of room, even for your cell phone. And a favorite of a lot of people are these Bakelite purses. The, this one is in excellent condition. It doesn't have the maker's name on the inside, but it has this carved uh, lid. And all of you, if you've watched several of our episodes, you know that I respond to whimsy. And this uh, kind of a basket purse with poker chips and dominoes and dice. It's the, it's the bag to take to Vegas. Consider it your good luck. It's like a picnic basket in a way with this great polka dot lining. Guaranteed nobody else in Vegas would have a purse with this cool a theme. It'll be an attention getter, and it has a hook to close. Excellent condition, brass ball bottom. And then we're gonna start with a rack. I brought something that's not a new acquisition just because it's super cool and I thought you'd appreciate seeing it. It's a personal piece of mine. It's Celine, Michael Kors for Celine, black silk Georgette with these brass pieces that are hammered into the fabric. We'll take photographs of the inside too so you can see. It's a technique that's similar to the Middle Eastern asuts, uh, which we have many of those and they're totally things that make, float my boat. But what's interesting is I actually have a 1920s scarf with similar uh, technique. And what's amazing is you don't usually see brass. You see silver in all grades, uh, from sterling to low grade. And you can tell because of the patina of the tarnish how good the grade of silver is on the asut. And I wear these two together when I've gone out, which is many years ago. Um, <laughs> but next to that is one of my favorite pieces that I recently got, 1930s bias cut with inserts of bias cut tape connected by uh, kind of a spiderweb faggoting. This is uh, a dress that would inspire John Galliano today. John, if you're watching, let me know if you're interested. And um, I have to say, Anna Mae Wong probably would have worn something like this in Hollywood back in the 30s. 
And hard to believe that a dress is that old in this condition and still so relevant. I love this dress. And I was lucky enough to acquire several pieces by the store Jax, J-A-X. The label is done on the vertical. Um, I became familiar with Jax living in San Francisco. There was a Jax store on Maiden Lane, and apparently the Hollywood version was in Beverly Hills. And it was uh, three men. Rudy Gernreich, Jack Hansen, and William Bass that came together. Each one had their own skill to add to their boutique. And Jack's became a favorite of many a Hollywood celebrity, most notably Marilyn Monroe. So we have several really yummy pieces by Jack's. This black satin coat dress which is very monastic. It is uh, a great piece to highlight fabulous jewelry. It's great, and it's in great shape. You know, the thing about satin is you want to make sure it was stored properly because whatever you lay on top of it can actually embed on the fabric. So if you're going to lay it down flat, which you should, because otherwise you're going to get stress pulls on the shoulders. Uh, make sure you separate whatever you put on top of it with either a uh, piece of fabric or tissue paper. So I'm going to just show you all the Jack's pieces. This one is incredible because the print is historic. Yeah, very Art Nouveau in feel. And the front is with these micro pleats. So it's a shirt dress mini with two hip patch pockets and then this great lace insert on both sleeves. Designed by Jax. And this vibrant purple mini is also <coughs> by Jax. It has almost a watermark moire pattern in the velvet. I don't know how they do that. I'd like to figure that one out. Maybe with rollers. And it was paired with this really great sized 60s bag with like a fleur-de-lis beading made in Hong Kong and this is also Jack's burgundy cotton velveteen with its matching belt this Super sexy, super simple, Scott Barry matte rayon crepe 70s dress is great. It's a great dancing dress. It's a great color. And then as we progress down the rack, okay, my favorite color, this tunic and pants. What would you wear underneath this? I think uh, boy shorts and a bandeau perhaps, if I was 40 years younger. Um, it's kind of one of the ultimate hippie silhouettes only because I think about women's liberation and how women became less afraid to show off their bodies. And we have one that's a little less extreme, but it also has a wonderful silhouette. So you can wear this either as a mini dress tunic or wear it with its matching bell-bottom pants. It's um, not a boucle knit, but it has a nice weight to it. 
So it can be worn any season. And what a color. Now this surprised me. From a distance, I could have sworn this was Dion, Dion von Furstenberg, DVF. It's a wool jersey, beautiful, almost um, Ozzy Clark floral, but believe it or not, it's Missoni from the 70s. And the silhouette is what everyone is doing now. So it's a great 70s piece that has been reinterpreted over and over again. It's so relevant. Then, for Disco Babes, this great red chiffon with a lurex cuff and waist. And we have with it this uh, quilted, it's a bally uh, shoulder purse that can also be a clutch. Uh, I don't think this was ever worn. It's in superb condition, lined in leather. And the print. You know, let's talk about the print. So many colors in it can be worn with so many things in your wardrobe. So, this wonderful play ensemble is Bill Atkinson of Michigan. I've had several pieces of his throughout the years. Uh, what I love about this, can you totally see Audrey Hepburn wearing this with really tight cigarette pants? Playful. Um, and the fact that these pieces have maintained, have stayed together after all these years is wonderful. Love it. And it's white and in really good condition. And then, okay, I know we showed this one to you last episode. But it's such a wonderful dress. It's Jean Patou Couture, 1960s. Um, it's marked a size 44, French 44. I would say it's probably a dress size 6, maybe 8, depending on how booby you are. Um, <clears throat> but this is a dress more than likely you'll be able to wear forever and ever and ever. Uh, and I just noticed that it has its original tag on the inside. I want to thank all of you guys for writing the things that you love on the website. And if you were the winner of the $500 uh, giveaway, thank you for taking the time to do that. I've read, I think, almost all of them at this point. For those of you that are not familiar with what I'm talking about, as we near our 50,000 subscriber target, uh, we thought it would be fun to give back to our community. And um, we're going to pick someone from the comments. And if you want to look through the website and see if there's something in there that you just would splurge the $500 giveaway on, that being said, I would also like to say that since we are not open to the public right now, uh, in order to be able to stay alive, we need to make some sales. So if there are things that you've had your eye on for a while, um, and you want to make a respectful offer, I will certainly consider it at this point in time. So um, I welcome you to see uh, if you can actually take home a wonderful piece from the way we wore. And also know that we are open to doing layaway. Uh, I mean, anything is possible. So we're not that far away from actually making things happen for you. So on that happy note, I wish you all the best. I hope 2021 has been good to you so far um, and that um, you're enjoying the content that we're offering to you. 
Uh, we accept any kind of suggestions you have if you want to put that in the comments as well. And we look forward to seeing you next time. So that's it for now. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>